make the inside of your Tesco's. This video is part two in a three part series. If you haven't made part one yet, check out the card system, the description below or the top of the comment section and you will be able to find links to all three parts. You will have to complete part number one before this video is applicable. So the first thing that we are going to do in part two is come inside of the build. We are only going to be building the entire inside of our Tesco's in this video and part three will focus on the remaining outdoor parts. One thing that I would recommend doing is lighting the area of your supermarket. I have added in these not so great looking strips of glass into the ceiling. We've got three kind of dividing the build into three thirds and this is going to do for now, but we'll add some artificial lighting and some way better looking uh, lighting options a little bit later on. Anyway, now that we're inside the build, we can see we are going to come all the way over to the left hand side and we want to take the corner block here. So this is the window. We want to take the corner block here. You guys can see which one it is and we want to extend this to the right by eight using smooth quartz. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we can join that down to the ground. We want to do that one more time. We want to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we want to join that down to the ground. We can extend that smooth quartz block forwards. It will join rather naturally to the front of the build. In addition to this, we can extend the smooth quartz upwards. So the vertical rows of smooth quartz that we have down below, we can extend upwards. And we can also create a window up at the top here. So the window is basically just going to emulate what we have around the outside, if that makes sense. We want to have a blue concrete wall. This is on the right side of the build here, and it is a row of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It will leave a gap of two. This is going to be the cafe portion of the build. We want to fill the side that we have just filled in and then the back parts of this in using blue concrete. So this is just the lower parts. I am slightly considering filling the top of this in with red concrete. So, not to look too much like Colgate, Colgate Toothpaste, uh, I hope that that's everywhere, not to look too much like Colgate Toothpaste, I mean, I, it's either that right or it's glass. Glass isn't a bad option. The only reason that I might have thought red is because it's kind of like, I mean, the, the colours that we're looking for are white, blue and red, so... It's, it's kind of up to you, but I, I think I do like glass a little bit better, especially because we've got so much red up above us anyway. The next thing that I want to do is come to the corner of the cafe area and I want to place one, two, three, four light grey concretes. Going to leave a gap of three, so that'd be one, two, three, and then here on the end, smooth quartz block. We then want to leave a gap of one and then place one, two, just two <laughs> smooth quartz blocks. Then, we're going to destroy in the ground going right, replace it using blue concrete, and then upside down smooth quartz stairs on top instead, just like this. We want to make the beginning... Oh! Actually, first of all, we kind of want to make a little bit of a queue area. So, the way to do this is relatively simple. We simply want a row of red concrete in front of this, leaving a gap of one. And we'll have a little gap on the right here that we can, like, walk in and around in front of. And we want a little bit of glass. So, that just makes it look a little bit more official, a little bit nicer. So, the next thing that we are going to do is we can make the beginnings of a coffee machine over here on the right. A couple of red concretes on top of each other in the corner here will do just nicely. Um, we want to make a bunch of tables, so it's actually easier to start over here. And um, basically, if we place like a couple of stairs, gap of, I think just a gap of one, a couple of stairs, gap of one, couple of stairs, like this. And then we can start placing end rods, which will be our primary lighting solution inside the cafe. Stairs on the opposite side, and then we can actually leave a gap of one, and then we can place a couple more end rods, stairs behind, and then this is kind of like the seating area for the cafe. I'm using red carpet as table toppers because we have a lack of red in here, apart from the ceiling of course, but we have a bit of a lack of red in here, and as I mentioned, the colours that we're trying to primarily focus on, uh, blue, white and red so any mixture that we can get of the three is kind of uh, kind of perfect 
Um, you may feel the want or need to add some pictures. Uh, I would fully agree with you. Do they? I don't know if they even have to be centered, to be honest with you. Like, do, would, would it look silly to kind of have them placed like this, kind of like not in center with the seating? I actually don't mind that. I think that that looks alright. I think that that's just fine. Um, we could even have like a bigger... Probably not a bigger picture, actually. Uh, we could have... I mean, how does this divide up? Kind of like this. Um, we could just have like a set of... A set of pictures like this. I just kind of want, because in supermarkets and stuff, there's always, like, advertisements and posters and, and what have you, like, oh, you can buy this for £3.47 instead of £7 such and such at the competitor. So, I, I just like the idea of posters and stuff everywhere. They're very ambiguous. It's like, they can be whatever you want them to be. So, next thing that we've got to do is go, we kind of just have to make behind the counter space area here. It should be relatively simple. So, we're going to grab um, Detect Rail, Trip My Hook, Button, spring stand, flower pot, smoker, polished down inside stairs, chiseled quartz block, and levers. So over here in the corner, we're going to place detect rail, trip wire hook above it, to the left, brewing stand, flower pot. Um, I'm going to destroy in front of this and underneath a little bit. So in front of these two smokers, which we're placing to the left here. I want to flip these uh, up as well. In front of these, I want to pla uh, place, and also, the smokers are here. What am I doing? That is not the right, <laughs> that's not, <laughs> that's not the right position for the smokers. So here, and then can flip these upwards. So I want to place in front of these two iron trap doors. We don't need to. I mean, it's a very, it, it doesn't matter. It's an inconsequential design, but I want some trap doors in front. So above them, I want to leave a gap of one and place some end sight stairs. And to the left, just a couple of chiseled quartz blocks. In front of the chiseled quartz, a couple of buttons. Um, a button here as well in front of the coffee machine. Uh, what else can we do with these materials that we have? Not too much. So we're going to dump these out for a second. And um, we're going to grab iron trap doors, waxed ox... Waxed, oxidized, cut copper stairs, water pressure plate, item frame, glass, lantern, cake, smooth quartz slabs. Um, and let's see if this should work, right? Iron trap dot. Why? Why isn't that working? Will that. I guess. D is it. Do. <laughs> Do the levers only affect blocks that they're directly under? You see, Java has different rules. I could have easily just placed a couple of torches. I thought that the levers would still apply to the two trapdoors that we have. So, I guess not. Give me a second here. So, I'm not a redstone master, as you have figured out. What, I mean, what if we just turn it off and on? So, I mean, sometimes that... Oh, okay, it does. I just had to I just had to be a bit patient. We could even leave that one flipped down and I think that that actually looks okay. So I'm actually okay with that. It just looks like the oven door is open. So we're going to place a lantern to the left here. Oxidized cut copper stairs, water pressure plate. Along the counter here, just a couple of item frames. I want a glass jar over here somewhere. Maybe a cake next to it. Um, I'm going to grab the red carpet and just chuck that on top of the glass jar. I'm also going to use red carpet above the coffee machine. And here we go. This is a perfectly lovely cafe. I mean, this is a cafe pretty much made. Not too uh, not too crowded, not too little detailed. It's, it's perfect just as it is. I really like this. So in doing that, we can now work out... By the way, there's still so much space. <laughs> so the next thing that we're going to be working on is we need we can use a lot of the materials that we already have so uh, i'm going to grab light gray concrete for this and i'm also going to need the quartz stairs trip wire hook white banner um paintings as well uh then maybe a little bit of red concrete maybe we'll definitely need a bit of blue concrete um some quartz block and some light grey a glass pane. So, I, first of all, I kind of just want to make the... Actually, so here, um, in supermarkets, have you ever seen the thing where, like, you can scan things yourself as you, like, push a cart around? Well, that's what we're going to be making. We're going to make, like, the station for this. So, it's basically going to be three light grey concretes just on the end here. 
Then we'll leave a gap of one from the bottom, upside down quartz stairs, light grey concrete, gap of one, light grey concrete. We're going to extend a couple of the light grey concretes up. Actually, as a matter of fact, we need a gap of two, and then we need an upside down quartz stairs here. And... Uh, oh, we also need the quartz slabs. So smooth quartz slabs we're just going to place in between the top here. And we need... Uh, we need something to block the gap diagonal from the stair. We're going to have a couple of paintings. And then trip wire hooks next to the paintings. White banners below. And it just kind of looks like the little computer system thing that uh, you would use to do what is formerly known as scan and go. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to make kind of like a self-surface service area. Not a self-surface. What are we, divers? Are we in a submarine? <laughs> so where we have the door here we're going to leave a gap of two and then we're going to stick a quartz block we're then going to destroy in the ground and place one two three four five blue concretes in the ground with a block of quartz on the end with then upside down smooth quartz stairs joining together then we're going to leave a gap of one here smooth quartz and then we're going to destroy a row of six one two three four five six Place blue concrete in here, and then you guys might have guessed it. Upside down smooth quartz stairs on top. Then a smooth quartz block on the end. Then, we're going to copy what we have over there. So we're just going to destroy all of this row here to equal the row opposite. And then we'll place upside down smooth quartz stair with then, well, regularly... There we go. <laughs> upside down smooth quartz stair with a regular smooth quartz on the end. Then we'll leave a gap of one smooth quartz. And you guys have guessed it i mean then we'll be doing the exact same thing here as well and as i mentioned this is going to be the sort of like self checkout area uh, we can majoritively place glass on most of this and yeah i think that we won't have any problems pretty much just all the way around then we are going to in front of the blue concrete that we have on the right here we're going to leave a gap of one and then we're going to place another row of blue concrete and at this point in time i think that we're just going to grab some new stuff like we're going to be using a lot of the same materials over and over and over again but we just need a slight material change so let me get rid of all of this and uh, we can see what the deal is okay so i have grabbed some grass cauldron dandelion poppies blue orchid lilacs rosebush, peonies, and some light grey concrete. I'm also missing flower pots, but the point of all of these materials and the reason that I've got this mixed match of flowers is that behind the row of blue concrete that I placed earlier, I'm going to stick some grass with some cauldrons on the end, just like this. Then I'm going to place the tall flowers that I've procured in the middle here and a couple of smaller ones just off to the side. Then, if I grab the flower pots, which I really should have had on me anyway, um, I can just place a bunch of flower pots here and I can just fill the pots with flowers. And this is basically just... You know how at supermarkets you can just literally just grab like a bunch of flowers and what have you? Th that's the entire point of this. It's just kind of like a, you know, if, if you forgot somebody's birthday... They're right by the entrance, you can grab them, go to the self-serve, and then you're on your way. <laughs> so, if somebody's birthday has been forgotten last second, then that's what this is for. So, we'll probably not need most of this stuff again, so I will actually just dump most of this out. We can grab it later if we need it. And what we will need, however, is we will need the light grey concrete for this next part. We'll need the smooth quartz stairs, uh, chest, detector, I'll polish uh, blackstone pressure <laughs> polished blackstone pressure plate uh, some black banners paintings and rod and beacons so inside this little self serve section we want to place i'm just i'm throwing out tongue twisters left and right self serve section honestly so in this corner here i'm going to place three light gray concrete and I'm going to extend the right two light grey concrete forwards with an upside down smooth quartz stairs in front of the left part here. I'm going to leave a gap of one and then place three light grey concretes. Extend the right two forwards and then upside down smooth quartz stairs. And then it's kind of up to you whether you would like to try and fit another machine in. You're not leaving yourself very much room is the only thing, but... Um, Anyway, to continue these machines, 
Black banners want to be placed in front of the outward grey light, uh, outward light grey concrete. Upside down smooth quartz stairs, or sorry, backwards facing smooth quartz stairs in front of, on top of the middle back light grey concrete. Paintings inside of that just to be display screens. Detector rail in front of this is kind of like that scanning device. Chests left of the stairs, just, you know, where you can keep your shopping and what have you. And then there's always like these things next to them where it's like a light where if, if you need help from like an employee or what have you, um, that's what that is. So just a couple of end rods with beacons on top as literally a beacon of help um, is going to be placed just there. And th that's it. That's pretty much the entire like self-surf scan machine. I actually think it looks pretty cool and hopefully it's rather evident why it is. Uh, so what that leaves this to be is like there's a decent amount of space here so what you could do is you could have a I mean you could have like a bunch of trolleys stacked up like you could have like basket uh, like a little basket return so maybe like a chest with an end rod and if you more so wanted to have like uh, as I mentioned like a little bit of a trolley return for people that have trolleys like we could have like a bunch of cauldrons here and instead of me finding the <laughs> Oak fence gates. I'll just uh, just quickly come and grab that and then stick one on the end, you know So something just like that um, you could even hang uh, Some banners off of here as well and that could look like um, some carrier bags or something depending uh, Upon where you are or depending upon how you feel you might rather have a different uh, Different banner, but it kind of just fills this little section in rather nicely and the only thing that I want to add here um, beyond this is um, there's those like anti-theft things, um, you know, the two things that you walk through. So if we chuck a couple of diorite walls just on the end here, we can place them here. And we can even place them like where the actual entrance is, so maybe like just a couple here and a couple here. Um, maybe even a couple here as well, and they're those things where you could even place beacons on top of them actually. And that's those things where it's like if you walk through here and you've taken something that you shouldn't have done, which can happen even accidentally. Sometimes they leave like tags on clothes and stuff. That's right, I get my best clothes from Tesco's. And um, those will start like beeping and flashing, and you get all embarrassed. It's like I've not stolen anything, I swear. Wink. So, anyway, now that that little soft serve section. Again, tongue twister. Try and say that quickly, honestly. Uh, has been taken care of. The next thing that we are going to do is the actual like till area. It's relatively easy to make. It's made using some red concrete, some polished and site stairs. I'm using block of coal, but you could easily use uh, just black wool. Um, smooth quartz stairs will need detector rail. We will need. Um, we need the light grey concrete again. The end rods again. The beacons again. And uh, we'll also need chests. We'll also need something else, but we can ta uh, tackle that in a sec. So, leaving a gap of four. So from this quartz here, leave a gap of one, two, three, four. And then on this fifth block here, light grey concrete. Extend back around. Place a double chest, one, two. And then a smooth quartz stair. And then two light grey concretes. And then at the end here, an upside down smooth quartz stair. And then we want to place a bunch, uh, we want to place one, two, three, four blocks of coal. Upside down polished and site stairs. With then red concretes in front of all of this coming all the way to the end where we have the upside down stair. Then in the back corner of this, a couple of end rods stacked on top of each other with a beacon on top. Perfect. Then we still need some more stuff, but we'll actually just tackle like we'll make the next we'll make this again And then we'll put the finishing touches and then we'll move on so um, We want to basically leave a gap of four so like one two three four and then here We're going to do the same setup. So a couple of light gray concretes a couple of chests smooth quartz stairs facing inwards a couple of light gray concretes on the end, an upside down smooth quartz stairs with a block of coal moving forwards towards his chest. An upside down polished and inside stair just on the end here. Red concrete in front of all of this moving back towards where we have that stair. Couple of end rods on top with a beacon on top of that. And there we go, perfect. So um, all we have to do to kind of like perfect these, and there's, there's not much left to do honestly. Um, bookshelves, weighted pressure plate, um, detector rail, 
and even where oh we uh, the light gray glass but we can just steal that from there and all we've got to do is on top of these front two uh light gray concretes stack bookshelves with weighted pressure plates on top because it's kind of like a little confectionery i'm not sure if that's the word actually but it might be actually confectionery area where you can just like buy gum and sweets and stuff just as you're waiting um i'm going to stick a detector rail in front of the seat and then glass in front of probably, maybe like in front of the detector rail and then a block either side. And there you go, that's just like that little window. So, um, of course, that is where the employee would sit. This is like bags and stuff. This is the, um, I don't know what to even call it, like the conveyor belt sort of thing. And then this is, you know, this is a separation. So, I'm actually really happy with that, by the way. I, that might be the best tool that I've made. I really like that. So... On the end over here, what we're actually going to make is this little unit again. So we, we are going to make a couple of these. And once again, to make them, we're going to need the light gray concrete, the smooth quartz stair. We'll then need detect rails, pressure plate, painting, chest, end rod, beacon, and... Oh, black banners, black banners as well. Perfect. So over here where we have the end, the light grey concrete, we'll come up against this wall and we'll place like three light grey concretes, leave a gap, three light grey concretes. This should line up perfectly with the tool section. And then we can place upside down smooth quartz stairs on the left, grey concretes in front, um, black banner, oh, my bad, um, black banners in front of, oh, that, that's a, a slight little detail that we missed over here as well. Polished blackstone pressure plates just on top of there is kind of like a final, you know, like the scale thing to make sure that once again, there's a lot of anti-theft in these supermarkets. I'm starting to think that people might steal stuff and uh, that's what those black uh, stone pressure plates are for as well. So um, let's place those on the end. See, I can't believe that I forgot that. I'm so glad that I remember because it really does just put an end to it. Um, we want the upside down, I keep saying upside down, the backwards facing stairs behind the detector rail, paintings in front of the stair, couple of end rods just on the end here leading up with beacons on top of the end rods, then a chest next to the stair like this. Oh, and then, of course, just the black banners in front of the two light grey concretes here, and that is perfect. Um, what do I want next to this? Well, next to this, we actually need a just some bookshelves, because it kind of, like, fits in the corner. There's actually a row of one, two, three, four bookshelves, and then we can extend these bookshelves up. And, actually, it makes sense that whilst we're at this point, by the way, the bookshelves come up as high as just below these windows. Next to this is a bunch of freezers, or fridges, but, you know, it, it doesn't matter. There's, there's actually no items in them. It's kind of just like a, a bit of imagination but uh, the point is that we're going to need the smooth uh, quartz we'll need the end rods which i believe we already have we need light gray concrete which we can just yoink from there and we just need sea lanterns and that's all there is to making them and we might as well make this part because it's like where we have um these bookshelves anyway and the way that we're spacing these freezers apart and the whole side here is almost all, all going to be freezers so we'll have like a smooth quartz Gap of two. By the way, this measurement matters. So, gap of two, smooth quartz. Gap of two, smooth quartz. Gap of three, smooth quartz. Gap of two, smooth quartz. Gap of two, smooth quartz. Gap of two, smooth quartz. And then maybe, I mean, you could probably even stick another one on the end here if you wanted to. I think that that'd be fine. Anyway, the smooth quartz all want to get extended up by two, just like this. This is perfect. Just up by two. And then underneath here, we want to have sea lanterns. This is to illuminate the fridge slash freezer section. And all we're going to do is... Oh, we also need to line the top of them using some light grey concrete. Just like this. Then... Oh, we're missing the material. How could we miss this? We need light blue glass block just to fill all of this in. Just like this. And we're just going to stick doors in front of, or door handles in front of these glass blocks. So we just need a door handle, and I, I might actually just place a block to make this easier. On the left or right side, doesn't really matter, I think of left. Um, I'm going to place end rods 
in the middle of the door like this and it just looks like a door handle to open these fridge freezers. These are very nondescript, they're very simple and I like them that way a lot. So if you had another block what you might want to do, like if you wanted to extend these out a row which I wouldn't recommend doing but if you did then you could extend them out a row and then you could put shelves in them and ultimately you could put um, you know different things inside the freezers but I'm not going to recommend doing that because it takes away uh, a bit more space but you could if you wanted to I mean we maybe we'll even see at the end but, yeah. Anyway, so the next thing that we're going to do as I comb through my plans is we are going to, we, over here, I, believe, I think that we've got, yes, over here, we are going to use the smooth quartz, which I've just thrown away. We will need bookshelves, uh, string, and white carpet. So, in this corner, pretty much from here, all the way to the equivalent place over there, we're going to have a bunch of shelving units. So... Starting from in front of this quartz block here, we're going to place a quartz block, six bookshelves, one, two, three, four, five, six, quartz block, six bookshelves, one, two, three, four, five, six, two quartz block, extend those quartz block outwards, and then take the back quartz block and extending towards the back here, we want to place six bookshelves, one, two, three, four, five, six, quartz block, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bookshelves, quartz block, six, one, two, three, four, five, six bookshelves, two quartz blocks, extend those quartz blocks outwards, and then we're just copying what we have over there. So once again, it will be six, one, two, three, four, five, six bookshelves, quartz block, one, two, three, four, five, six bookshelves, quartz block. The quartz block wants to get extended all the way up like this. So the quartz block is going to extend up the wall here just below the glass pane line like this so this is going to take some doing here here it's so weird that <laughs> it kind of weirded me out i mean it might even make sense to kind of like do this because then from the because it looked a little bit weird having that block there and having the bookshelf line here but um, the reason that I did that with the bookshelves is because the bookshelf, it, it just looked, it, it, it was separated more evenly this way. And um, anyway, we're going to extend all of the bookshelf parts up by two rows uh, as well. So on the left side here, we want to make it so that the smooth quartz just overhangs it. Um, we want the bookshelves to be one row lower than the smooth quartz. So where possible, where necessary, again, the smooth quartz wants to be extended out one row in front of the bookshelves. Um, it's actually possible in every single instance. I don't know why I said where possible. Um, we've already done it in the two corners so um, that's kind of like framed them and then we can add all of these and you could just leave the bookshelves as is by the way if you wanted to you could just leave them like that or alternatively we can place string at the base of this and then we can have just two rows of white carpet so um, two rows of white carpet just stacked on top of each other so here here it's it's a little bit of a lengthy process but i mean it's this is a really and then the white cut that is not carpet and then the white carpet on top of the string there we go so the entire point of this uh, uh, the these are just shelves right anything could be on this shelves bookshelves are perfect for this because bookshelves are ambiguous they are bookshelves obviously like you look at them and it's like oh those are books but you also sort of look at them, or at least I do, and I get this impression that they could, they're so colourful and busy, like you could be sort of convinced anything's sort of on there, it could just be a bunch of products. So I, I think that it's just a lot better than individually making each shelf and putting individual items, like it's just a good way of like mass adding in, like just a bunch of shelving units, and I think that it's really effective. Anyway, now that we've done that, we have to make a bunch of shelves in the middle of the saw, and then we can start specializing a little bit. So, the bunch of shelves that we have to make in the middle of the saw, um, it's all made using the same stuff, by the way. I mean, the only way that you may, perhaps you want to diversify, and you could change the shelf color if you would like. Um, any gray would work, so maybe some light gray carpet or gray carpet, and we're going to come here, where we have the self-serve area here, right? We're going to come here, we're going to leave a gap of four, so one, 
two, three, four, and then this fifth block, we're going to place quartz block. And then we're going to extend that quartz across by three. So one, two, three. Leave a gap of four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Leave a gap of four. One, two, three, four. And then a gap. And then one, two, three, four quartz. So, by the way, coming back to the fridge discussion. So this is where you you would still have room to walk down this aisle. By the way, if you did extend these out. So it is something that I might possibly do. We want to take the middle two quartz blocks and we want to place five, one, two, three, four, five bookshelves, extending backwards from the middle two quartz blocks with smooth quartz block on the end. So we want to do this in each one of the three cases that we have this, like this. And then here, here, here. And then we want to leave a gap of three, like one, two, three. And then we want to have the same thing. They're the same measurements as well. So we can literally just kind of like come across. We can line it all up in the one, two, three, four, five. And then we can stick the smooth quartz block on the end. And then bookshelves in the middle. We'll raise the bookshelves upwards. And um, let's place the bookshelves. We'll raise the quartz. We'll raise the bookshelves upwards. We'll apply the shelves, and then that will be that. I mean, it's it's really easy. So we don't want to connect these together in the middle, of course. And uh, the bookshelves want to be. I mean, how hot? Sorry, the quartz wants to be probably um, one, two, three. We probably want to add three rows to the quartz, or we can add like. I think that that's actually fine because then we can add. Let's have a look. Then we can have this and then string. And let's say that we use light gray. So we can have here, here, and here. And maybe we'll just have shelves like coming all the way up to the top. We'll make these a little bit different than the ones to the side. So that's what we're going to do, right? We're going to have uh, three sets of bookshelves in the middle. We'll have three loads of shelves. That means that the smooth quartz block, we either use we either use four rows in total of the smooth quartz, or we use three rows of smooth quartz with quartz smooth quartz slabs on top. So like that. So it's up to you which which way you want to go. Um, I'm going to be sticking to the original plan. Oh, we also do have to add to the front of these. So now that we've kind of made the front of these, um, I'm going to stick some bookshelves in front. Um, so this is towards where we have the checkout area. And then string. And this is where we could differentiate perhaps. We are going to place some string. And then uh, just a couple of rows of grey carpet. So yeah, this is where we'll keep the differentiation. So did I place the string already? I have a feeling I did, right? Yeah, I did. Perfect. Um, you, I couldn't tell. <laughs> You guys know what a string looks like. It doesn't really look like anything, so I couldn't really tell. But anyway, just a bunch of shelves. And of course, that can be anything. That could be more confectionery. Like, as I'm... No, I didn't place that. Um, so, you know, like, a lot of the time, like, on those end shelves, it'll be stuff like batteries, and, you know, just sweets and whatever other gum, you know. Anything that you that you might want, like, might possibly think you need seems to be on those shelves. I think a lot of thought actually goes into what to put where in a supermarket. Like, apparently stuff like bread and what have you is purposefully... Okay, so I don't know why I'm getting into the psychology of supermarkets, but apparently stuff like bread and things that you might need on a more everyday sort of basis, uh, the more perishable of your goods, is purposefully put towards like the end of the store so you have got to go through the entire store to and in doing that like you're more likely to see things that you would want and it's the same sort of stuff with like the end of the aisle stuff where it's like oh this is on sale buy this like everything's set out in such a way to make you want to purchase things that you may or may not necessarily want and the stuff that you do want is uh, purposefully in a difficult to get place to make you go past all of that stuff which is enticing in the first place. It's just kind of like interesting, I guess. Maybe not to anybody else but me, but anyway. Uh, we are cracking on nicely with these shelves. We've made half of them right now, which is pretty good. Um, the only thing that we might do later is add some lanterns. We're still not 100% certain on what to do about the whole lighting situation. I'll probably cover most of it with lanterns, but... Um, Let's raise up the back shelves, and then there's actually a produce section which I've got to make as well. That is going to be oh, we're missing a bunch of a bunch of bookshelves here, but that's okay. Um, there is a why is that? 
There we go. Um, we're missing a bunch of um, a, a produce section, and that is over there. It's kind of like slotted into the middle of all of those bookshelves. And behind where I am now is going to be like a, bun uh, a bunch of fresh counters, meaning stuff like uh, like where one would buy like meat and fresh bread. And I think that there's even a fish counter. Um, so it's, it's just kind of cool like instead of everything being a bit boring like we do have like i will admit that the bookshelf like the main aisles and stuff like it's a little bit repetitive but we do have some interesting details thrown in at the same time so to counteract kind of like perhaps the blandness of you know like what we're building now although very necessary by the way unless you did literally want to build up um, just individual shelves of stuff, which I mean you could do. Um, I'd be more tempted to do it in a smaller, uh, a smaller supermarket, but this is a pretty decent size, I think. I mean, I was even considering making this two-story, and then putting like a clothing section. I might save that for my next supermarket. I will have to do another supermarket. I actually like making them quite a bit. Like I really like making them. I don't know why. It's uh, I I have no idea. Maybe it's a um. A familiarity sort of thing or maybe it's just like supermarket i sort of do like supermarkets though like they're sort of fun to walk around like you can buy there's so much stuff to get like i don't know I, I kind of enjoy them sounds like a weird thing to say does anyone else like going to the supermarket and just like looking at stuff and just buying random stuff that you don't need i certainly do so now that we have kind of like finished this little section, the only thing that I want to make, because I think that we've got all of the materials for it as I quickly comb through the plants. Here we go. So in this little back corner here, um, I'm going to grab... No, you know what? Actually, never mind. So I'm going to dump all of the materials that I have, or at least most of them, and I'm going to grab what I think I need for the, uh, for the next stage of the build. So I'll be back in a second once I've grabbed all that stuff. Okay, I think that I have got most of the materials that we're going to need for this next part. So we're going to use some spruce wood blanks, some spruce wood slabs, some green concrete, some dirt, spruce trap door, lanterns, bookshelves, string, gray carpet. And what we're going to do is make the aforementioned produce section. So to do this, we're going to leave a gap of five between the quartz block here, kind of like at the end of these shelves. So a gap of one, two, three, four, five. So on the sixth block here, we're actually going to place a row three, one, two, three, spruce planks, and then a gap of uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, spruce planks, and then you will have a gap of five there as well. So they are placed perfectly in the middle. We want to raise up the spruce planks to be three rows high in total, with then spruce slabs on top. Then we're going to extend these slabs across by seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and by across, I mean like towards the back here. I mean, you could even extend them a little bit further if you wanted to, but um, I want to be able to, I think that the idea was, oh, hang on, <laughs> that's, that's too much, so hang on. I think the idea is that like on the end here will also be like um, some bookshelves and then it just gives you like a decent amount of space. Anyway, the last, uh, the last planks want to, or slabs want to get extended down using planks. Um, we want to do the same thing to the other set of shelves that we just have there. So we can extend these up and then extend the spruce wood slabs. So here, extend these. In the middle of this, we want to place rows of green concrete. So this is in the middle, extending forwards and backwards. We just want to have a bunch of green concrete like so. Then we're going to place dirt in front of the uh, bottoms of both sides of the shelving unit. So this is just going to be dirt here. And then we're going to place spruce trap doors in front of the dirt and we're going to flip them upwards like this and this oh we're also going to need a light source but um oh and on the ends maybe we should do that part next so now that we've kind of like placed the spruce trap doors on the ends i want to have it's basically on the same as the uh on the ends here we have the bookshelves with then string 
with then some grey carpet. And I think that we'll just make the one shelf because, again, I, I want to keep it a bit different. That's why I'm using grey carpet instead of light, light grey or white. And uh, I'm going to have the same thing over here as well. So it'll be a row of bookshelves, string on top, with then the grey carpet on top of that. Uh, I want to place lanterns hanging from the tops of the inside of the uh, just the spruce slabs. So the lanterns are going to be, we'll leave a gap of one on the left and right side and then we'll have the lanterns placed. Again, I'm trying to get as much light in as possible. Um, another trick is to kind of just place lanterns like on top of the separations between the shelves is, I mean, because it looks fine. It doesn't look that weird to have like a bunch of lanterns. It actually looks kind of nice, or at least it feels warmer to me to have them just kind of like placed everywhere. And a similar sort of thing can be done here. So like for where we have these shelves and it will basically cover the entire saw pretty much like between the windows and between the beacons, between the end rods. If you place lanterns on just, and other than that, if you then place lanterns on top of kind of just the ends of these shelves. I mean, it is very, very busy with the lanterns. I will say that, you know, it's, it is a lot of lanterns, but um, I don't mind it. And it lights up the entire store pretty much. So anyway, now that we have done all of that, we've just got to fill the little produce section in and oh, plus we're going to add a bit of a floor using red concrete, but we're just going to grab some potatoes, carrots, seeds, beetroot seeds, and um, oh, maybe you can't place potatoes. Oh, 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 hang on. <laughs> We're missing a step. My bad. Okay, so we've got to hoe the area first. My bad. And then we can place the potatoes and the carrots and this and that. So uh, let's get this hoed. And then we'll place... How could, how could I forget that part? <laughs> That's, that seems like an important part to miss. So get all this taken care of. Seeds. And then... I'm going to destroy uh, probably just but where the spruce is. So from the spruce to the spruce, I'm going to have a couple of rows of red concrete kind of just interspersed in this um, in this area. So here, just like this, not where the shelves are, but just in front of like literally where the produce part is or the spruce part. I'm just going to have a couple of rows of red concrete just on this side. And then all the way over on this side as well. So here. And oh. Here. Here. And here it just looks quite good. I'm quite happy with that. That's looking pretty decent. I, I am also considering adding a bunch of red carpet. I can't remember where it is in the plans exactly. It's got to be here somewhere. Um, a bunch of red carpet too. How can I not find this? Um, to this area, so like where we have kind of like this little um, scan area, just maybe like just a couple of rows of carpet just in front of this. It, it just seems appropriate for some reason. Just it, it just looks a little bit nice, I think, to kind of just like have just a couple of rows there, and then just like a row in the middle, and then just a couple of rows in the middle. It just seems a little bit nicer. I, I don't know. It just does to me. Um, we could even have like a shopping cart as well, just stuck in. Just as I'm kind of going around the store, by the way, I'm noticing things like, oh, maybe just like a shopping cart here and there and, you know, just to kind of like liven things up a bit. But I think that that's really good. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of um, bins, I'll call them, but they're like produce bins. Pumpkins, melons, and red mushrooms look quite good for this as well. And uh, I'm going to grab uh, some spruce trap doors. And basically, in the middle of this aisle here, we are going to leave a gap of two from the uh, quart, so a gap of two, couple of pumpkins, and extend left and right like this. And then in between the separation between these two shelves, we're going to have like a two by three square of melons. And then back here, we're going to take the end of the shelf, leave a gap of two, and then it's the same thing with the mushrooms. So I went through that really quickly, but I think it's easier to kind of show you now. So um, from the end of the shelf, you will leave a gap of two, and then it's just like a two by three square. In between the two sets of shelves, a two by two, three square, and then a gap of two, and then we've got a two by three square. And then all we're gonna do is we're going to place some spruce trap doors all the way around it. And it just looks like one of those, um, produce bins that you can um, 
you know, just grab stuff from, and that's all there is to it. Whether it's, you know, stuff on sale or whether it's like, you know, fresh, fresh fruit or veg or whatever it might be. But it's just a cool thing to add to the, especially to the entrance, because that's meant to be the more alluring part, I think. And um, I think it's quite interesting the way it is. I really, I really do quite like the layout so far. So now that we've done all of that, like we've got a good majority now, right? And um, something else that we can do whilst we're talking about just like shopping carts and stuff is, you know, we can just have them kind of like into this. Hang on. No, I want the, the gate. There we go. We can just kind of have them like dispersed all over the place. Uh, it, I think it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. Maybe even one at the end here, you know? Just makes it a bit more interesting. Just have like a shopping cart and stuff just every so often. I should probably stop doing that and we should focus more on the rest of the build. So the next part is I just want to make a very small electronic section. So this is, all this is going to be, it's going to be made out of, got a bunch of stuff now, haven't we? That we don't really need for the moment. So um, for the section, it's basically just blue concrete, um, some black concrete, smooth quartz slabs, paintings, and um, just across this back wall here, we're going to place a row of one, two, three, four, five, six blue concrete, just next to this shelf. Then we're going to stick um, smooth quartz block on the end, and then extend that smooth quartz upwards one, two, just like this. And then we're going to place a row of smooth quartz slabs extending left. And then just a couple of black concretes like this with some painting. Oh, God. And then we're going to place some paintings in front of these to look like just live TVs. I mean, I guess it's okay that we've, used, we've got the same picture and then same here, just like, are you kidding me? And then I'm going to keep it just because of the, the coincidence of it, but um, we've just got a bunch of TVs just on this back wall here. Preferably, they'd all be different, but um, I guess that the Minecraft gods have decided that it will all be a kind of bluey sort of oceanic background, so... Um, Anyway, now that we've got a small electronic section sorted out, we're going to come to the right here. And we have a bunch of different, uh, like, individual areas to make. So we need smooth quartz blocks for this. We need some glass paint. We need light blue concrete, magenta concrete, orange concrete, and some light grey concrete. We can also grab these sea lanterns whilst we're here, and then we need, like, a bunch of individual... Oh, we could also maybe even use some lanterns, maybe. And then we need, like, a bunch of individual blocks. So... Directly to the right of the electronic section here, we're going to place a row of five, one, two, three, four, five smooth quartz. Flare that last block in. Oh, and also we need these spruce trap doors as well. So, yoink. Here we go. So then, on this back wall here, we're going to have a row of light grey concrete that's equal in width to these smooth quartz. And then we're going to flare these two end blocks upwards by two, to which we then want to place light blue concrete on extend forwards and out so that it hovers above the quartz area and then we're going to place maybe we'll turn it into a, a bit of a square like this or a rectangle place sea lanterns inside just like this and then we are going to just place light blue concrete here just on top just a couple of rows like this we might even extend it out onto the top of this shelf here as well and i think that we'll make these two block sea lanterns too and uh, we'll also place some spruce trap doors in front of the front of this with glass in front of this as well just flaring around to the side and then we can always we want this to stick out a row i i don't know whether i want this to stick out a row like this or whether it will look a bit goofy. I don't think it will because we'll be on the ground. And then and then we can stick like a lantern on here. I think that that will be just fine. Let me, let me just have a quick look at the old plans. I think that that's fine. I think that they are actually meant to stick out a row. So that's perfectly fine. And then the next part of this, is, of course, is to then move on to the next one. So here we actually want to leave a gap of two so we'll go from the counter a gap of two and then a row of six quartz one two three four five six and then we can extend this quartz into the wall or maybe close to the wall and then stick a light gray concrete on the end extend up by two one two extend the light gray concrete across the bottom to the left stick a couple of light gray on top and then magenta on top of the two light greys extending across like this. Then we can extend the magentas forwards like so, so they extends over, hanging over the counter by one row. 
like so. And I'm just realizing, by the way, that we should we needed to keep a space um, for we needed to keep space for these sea lanterns inside of this, but that's okay. We can just dig this out. We just want to essentially just carve out the two uh, couple of middle rows, I think. Do we want to do that, or do we want to, or do we want to kind of like make it like the first one? And kind of like have the first two rows kind of just like the color, like this. And then we can stick the glass pane on the side and kind of just have it flare inwards. And spruce trap doors in front. And then we can stick some lanterns just hanging off the end. So here and here. I think that that actually looks pretty good. And then we just need to do this one more time. And this last one, we just want to... Um, it's, it's pretty much the same thing, like we'll leave a gap of two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six smooth quartz, and then we can extend this inwards, almost towards the back, but we want to use light grey concrete of course, and then extend the light grey concrete upwards by one, two, extend across the back, one, two, stick orange concrete on the end, extending across, and then forward so that overhangs a row. Um, we want an extra row in the front, with then a couple of rows of sea lanterns. couple, uh, Not just a couple, just a row, a layer of orange on top. Just like this. Then hang some lanterns off of the ends. Glass pane like this, just around the edge. And all that remains is for us to place some spruce trapdoors. Perfect. There we go. So... In doing that, ladies and gentlemen, we have three, what is this is going to be, it's going to be like a fish counter, a butcher's, and then it's going to be a little bakery. And, um, oh, we could even maybe like extend just like the end here as well. I think that uh, that's going to be fine in every single circumstance. And then all we've got to do is we've just got to grab like, like, okay, so for instance, like, where is the meat counter? So the meat counter, we can actually add, like, an entire row of light grey concrete to the front here. And we can do uh, pretty much, I think, the same thing for the bakery one, too. Like, we can just add an extra row of light grey concrete. And then we just need, like, a bunch of specialised blocks. So I'm going to grab those. That will be the last thing that we need to grab, I do believe, unless... Um, it kind of depends what we want to do for the lobby. So, like, we've got a little bit of a lobby, or that. I don't, I don't really want to add anything much in here, to be honest. Like, I quite like it just kind of, like, clean and empty. So, I, I think that we will leave it like that. And the only thing that I, is left to do is to just make these counters. So, let me take a little look at what we need. Okay, I think that I've got everything that we need. So, it, we don't even need too much stuff. Like, I've got a furnace, blast furnace, a smoker, some ice. Now, this might not be the best choice. Either use ice or... Some some light blue glass block, uh, item frames, stone cutter, cake, bread, and cookies. So, in this first one, we're basically just going to place a bunch of ice with a bunch of item frames on top of the ice, and this is where we're going to keep the fish. In the back here, we'll just have like a, cu a couple of smokers and maybe like a couple of blast furnaces stacked on top of each other, a couple of item frames in the back. Um, this second one, this is where the butcher is, is, so I'm going to have a stone cutter, bunch of item frames and then maybe a couple of blast foot you see the issue with the ice the issue with the ice is that it melts so the the thing about ice is the it is better to have what i would call faux ice which is light blue glass block i had a feeling that the ice would melt i was correct so anyway uh, we want to place item frames pretty much everywhere. We've got the stone cutter that's kind of like a meat cutter. Um, back here, we're, I think we'll just use like a maybe a couple of blast furnaces, regular furnaces again. And um, maybe we'll have like a cake back here, item frames. And just on this counter, just like a bunch of item frames. Um, in the item frames, we can have like, maybe we'll have like a cake and then we'll have like a bread, cookie, and then a cake. And there we go. Perfect. Bakery counter. Here it will just be a bunch of meat, so literally I've just grabbed a load of raw meat, raw chicken, pork chop, beef, mutton, rabbit. We'll also need cod, salmon, tropical fish, puffer fish, uh, so uh, chicken, pork chop, beef, mutton, rabbit, 
and then just a bunch of the fish here we can have oh no it's nemo we can have a bunch of the fish in here and i mean that's that's the counters done i mean there's nothing else to them it's it's as simple as that um the only thing that you might want to do is like i've noticed like on the backs of like on some of these like um shelves uh, maybe if you, we stick some just paintings or something just on these shelves, the backs of them. Maybe even the middle parts, uh, or at least one of the sides of the middle parts. So like here, and then like when it comes to this, um, maybe just here, you know. Just, it, I, maybe it looks a little bit better. I, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, because we, we don't have like the extra shelves that we have. Um, on like the fronts so maybe just to kind of like stop these looking a little bit bland we'll just have like the pictures and those can be advertisements and such you might want to do the same on that side too i think i will actually um, i wasn't going to but i think i will so we'll stick these here Ita pictures here 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 perfect so there we go bunch of paintings there we are. Nice. I like that. And in doing that, ladies and gentlemen, as I look around this build, I mean, we, we, we've sort of made the entire inside. We, we've sort of done it. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what our entire supermarket will look like once it has been 100% fully completed, or at least the inside of the supermarket. I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. I think that we've got a load of colourful sections. We've got a load of interesting sections to the supermarket. I, I think that it's detailed, but not over-detailed. It's also not under-detailed. I think it has reached a perfect equilibrium. Very, very happy with how this has turned out. I mean, we've even got a cafe, self-serve. We've got like the scan and go, the bakery counter, all sorts of stuff. So this is what your supermarket should look like. I'm hoping that you have achieved all of this and you have managed to make it to your liking. And I hope that you're happy with the tutorial. I know that these can sometimes be a bit all over the place. So thank you very much for tuning in. That was part two, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like to make part three of the video, you will be able to find it in the card system, the description below, and the top of the comment section. We will be working on the petrol station and car wash, which is located on the right side of the, what I will call, Tesco compound. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.